Hi guys, it's me, V, back at you with another video. Today we're gonna be talking about, you guessed it, the chocolate noir, the highly coveted Rolex GMT Master II, the Roser, nicknamed the Root Beer. So this is a hands-on review for the chocolate noir. This is a two-toned, this is also a two-toned watch. This is Roser in Everose Gold, this one is in Yellow Gold. So why does two-tone get no love? Well, commonly known as Rolzer, two-toned watches are bimetal, mixing stainless steel with either yellow gold or Everose gold, or is French for gold, if you're wondering. Looking at the MSRP prices, you'll find two tones are priced higher than the stainless steel counterparts, since gold's content is higher. In previous videos, I addressed that two-tone watches are seemingly more inferior. You can see this by pricing of models in the second-hand market. Just look at the GMTs or the Daytonas. Before the escalating prices, what got the most love from avid watch collectors? Who would buy a V Rolex sports models? Those people still dominate the watch market. Two-tone was a hit back in the 80s, but since then, the general consensus labeled two-tone as old-fashioned or second-tier to stainless steel. This isn't only limited to Rolexes. APs and Pateks two-tone suffer the same fate. Men are fickle. They want stainless steel, and they're not likely to sway away from this mindset. There's also another reason for this unpopularity and why historically people tend to avoid full PMs like the plague. That reason is pricing. With a larger MSRP, why pay more for essentially the same watch? Not to mention, replacement costs for the link will inevitably cost more. If you want gold, just buy gold. Now, I personally love the old school look of the all gold black dial Samariner, but it can also be because I already own so many popular models that I value uniqueness. But avoiding the polarizing Rolzer would be best if you view these as investments. So if you love the Rolzer, who cares what anyone else think? So that's the end of my video, guys. Tune in next time. Bye. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But in the midst of all this polarizing mentality, are all two tones treated equally? And the short answer is no. In 2005, Rolex released the Everose Color, a proprietary blend of alloys, first on the Daytona. Everose is an alternative to yellow golds, giving it a warmer tone, a colorway which is liked by both men and women. Yellow golds seem to be viewed as loud or obnoxious, whereas Everose is slightly more subdued, less in your face. The first time that Roser came out in Everose and stainless steel was actually on the Yachtmaster. The year was 2016 when Yachtmaster referenced 116621 one came out the first time in Everose two-tone with a chocolate dial. This was also the same year that the Panda Daytona, a polarizing name, and the ceramic bezel was released, and that is why the Yachtmaster had no love going its way. In 2018, Rolex released another Rolzer in Everose, and that is the GMT Master II Chocolate Noir. At the time, this wasn't a popular variant either, always in the shadow of the iconic Pepsi GMT. But as Rolex became more and more mainstream, more watches besides the stainless steel Daytona and the stainless steel Samariner became sought after, leading to the surge of what you see many, many watch prices going up for many models. So why are they going up in value now? And does this mean they're better value for money? Well, for the longest time, the CHNR was trading at about 1.5 MSRP. It was a watch, even though you couldn't walk into the AD Dubai, that had a gray market price that was acceptable. By the time January 2022 rolled around, most watches shot up in price, and the CHNR was no exception. The fact is, when the Daytona is trading at four times MSRP, two times MSRP is just like a steal. What makes the root beer special? Why does root beer warrant special attention? Pictures can't capture this beauty, but if you ever see this watch in the flesh, this black dialed watch is far from boring in the sunlight. This watch is like liquid honey. Let's talk about the bi-directional ceramic bezel. I'm so. Simply turn the bezel to compensate. Instead of the silver graduations, they are in the beautiful rose gold color. The black and brown create a harmony with the rose gold. The dial is rich and colorful, mixing white letters, brown letters, rose gold enclosed indices and hands on a matte black dial. The two-tone rose gold with a brown color is not too old school. And when compared to the previous five-digit GMTs, which appear smaller and more vintage looking, this new maxi bezel is very nouveau riche. Rupier seems more luxurious, with solid polished center links, a revamped buckle, and since it's heavier, it gives a more substantial presence on the wrist. And who is Rupier for? 
This watch is a true chameleon, suitable for men and women. On the right person, it can be transformed into a feminine or a masculine watch. It's the only two-toned watch I have in my collection, and in my humble opinion, I think it's more feminine than the Pepsi GMT on the wrist. You can also pull off a more edgy, cool vibe. Arguably, it's one of the most useful tool watches in Rolex's lineup. The GMT allows you to track two time zones, prominently displaying them simultaneously. And, best of all, it has a date window, unlike the Daytona. If you value a tool watch, although not as robust as a Submariner, since the sub has all brushed stainless steel links, the root beer is a close second, much more interesting than the masculine Pepsi. The updated caliber 3285 is also very useful, giving you a 70-hour power reserve. Certainly a must if you have a large watch collection. And perhaps best of all, for those who might not necessarily have such a big budget for the Daytona, the root beer is definitely relatively inexpensive. Now, stay away from root beer if... At the end of the day, this watch is still more polarizing than the Daytona, and with reasons. It's not a watch for everyone. Stay away from the Chocolat Noir if you want the OG watch and don't want to settle. You might just have to pick up a 5-digit GMT Master 2, or even the OG Root Beer. I personally have a 147mm wrist, and since the watch is bigger than the Daytona, if we are to compare it from the lug to lug, Daytona tends to sit more elegantly on the wrist, whereas the GMT is definitely more masculine. And as for the full PM root beer, even though it's a perfection of a specimen, I think it's too expensive and not the best value for your money. If you were to go full PM, why not get a Daytona? The verdict. The overall verdict I have is that the root beer is a great choice as a first watch or an only watch in one's collection. The caveat is that it must be a watch you sincerely love. If it's not your first choice, don't settle. Settling is always more costly in the long run. Buy it once and call it done. Since you guys stayed for the entire video, here's a bonus tip. It has come to many people's attention that one of the setbacks to two-toned watches is that the rose gold medal on the clasp may come off. Although this isn't a widespread problem, here is a way you should open your watch to prevent this. Doing this has two benefits. One, it ensures that part fused on by Rolex and not soldered will not come off from removing and putting on your watch. That's because the 18 karat gold has to be placed on the stainless steel clasp. Second, it prevents scratches on your buckle. Hey, take this advice how you will. This is a very expensive problem to rectify. This suggestion may be able to save you the headache of taking a trip to the RSC or Rolex Service Center. So remember, you're supposed to grab the side and fling it up instead of using your nail to go under and up. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys learned something new today. Leave me a comment below and tell me which watch would you rather choose, Daytona, GMT, or Submariner? As always, don't forget to like this video for the YouTube algorithm. Since I'm a fairly small channel, I really need the extra exposure. Thanks guys for helping me out. Subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.